Thanks for tuning in to this episode of I Have Something to Say, where subject matter experts are unafraid and unapologetic about sharing their perspectives regarding issues that impact our lives. They speak up because basically they give a shit. So if you're tired of canned answers and want to finally hear real people cut through the BS and talk about real issues, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Sami Heyman Marrero from Urbander, and behind our mixer is our producer, Chris Mayoka from You Do You. Hi, everyone. I am so excited because we have a very special guest um, by way of Sholanda, and I'm so excited that we are finally meeting, even though it's virtually. Um, and uh, welcome, Naomi Gonzalez Longstaff. She is the founder of Naomi Nail Lacquer. She's a celebrity nail artist. She is an entrepreneur. She is she works in editorial fashion. I mean, she's all over the world. Um, LA, Florida, New York, UK, and now we have her here with us. And I'm really I'm, hi, I'm in awe of you, Naomi. And uh, and and we brought her. I mean, there's so many things that we could talk about. But we had to have you um, with us because there are a lot of people that are looking into entrepreneurship right now sure. that so many people got laid off. And mm-hmm. of course, I, and I'm speaking now for myself, you know, having my own company, the big dream is to go global, right? And you've done it and, you're, mm-hmm. and you've done it. And so, as a you Latina. know, the, in, as a Latina too, on top of that, <laughs> as right? As a woman. As a woman also. So there are all these layers. And so then if you could do it, I feel we could all do it. And I just want to listen, learn, and <laughs> and and know how in the world can we scale? How can we, you know, grow to that level? And, and just talk to me I, about your journey. Talk to us, you know, about me and Shalanda are like completely tickle pink <laughs> that you're here with us right now. And I know you started over a decade ago. And so tell us, how did you get into this world? Yeah, I know, right? How did you get, it takes hard work, look like this, right? An investment of time and energy. But how, how did you dive into, you know, the beauty industry, you know, and, and knew that this is for me and, and those first steps in your journey. You know, when you were describing me, like where I'm at, I'm so tired. I was tired by the time you were like, this is, she's done all this. I'm like, <laughs> how? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> you just even saying it. I'm tired. Okay. It's funny, you know, let's, let's touch on entrepreneurship really quick because, oh, yeah, so, because, because I can remember, I think I was around six or seven years old. I used to sell, paper like stationery and supplies to people uh-huh, like uh-huh. little little kids in my building uh-huh. used to live in newark i was born in newark new jersey so we lived there and um and i used to play with other kids but they wanted some of my paper I'm like give me a you know a quarter or or five cents i used to do that i was like seven or eight i had a couple little businesses here and there but it wasn't until 2008 in which i really made a huge career change. I actually am a planner, an urban designer by trade. Oh. Oh. I'm an alum yeah, I'm an alumni at UCF. I went to Valencia. Ah. And I went after Valencia, I got accepted to Columbia University in New York and I went. Mm-hmm. And then nine eleven happened and I came back running back to Florida. Always like my day came mm-hmm. And then um I started at UCF. I, I studied planning. I had a dream job working with the Diocese of Orlando, actually. Mm-hmm. I would travel between here and the Dominican Republic, and I did infrastructure management, help coordinate volunteers, et cetera. Oh, my and God. It's like a whole other world. world. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it wasn't this. Uh, I'm going to tell you, it wasn't this. <laughs> so, um, you know, I studied urban design, and I had this job. And... Um, and, and me and my boss, we didn't get along. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a blessing or a curse? But, a blessing. Not definitely, because, you know, they it, it was personality clashes, right? Mm-hmm. And and when there's personality clashes, you have someone who's like in their late 70s clashing with someone in their 30s. That's at that point, it becomes a power structure, I think. Mm-hmm. A power play, you know, like this yeah. 
and I, I they kind of like put me in a corner kind of speak like you need to do this or else and I'm like I'm out mm-hmm. and then we left that day in tears mm-hmm. oh, wow. left and I said if I need to change my career it mm-hmm. has to do in something that I love so what's the quickest way into that career because I love fashion and I love beauty and mm-hmm. like how do I do this so I found a nail school and it was again I'm a Central Florida girl all the way in terms of the way I was educated and and trained I guess so I found Winter Park Winter Park Tech which is an Orange County public school you know it's a tech school vocational tech I'm a huge advocate for vocational tech training I think we need more of that but that's that's a whole other podcast Mm -hmm. all right so I found that school like on a Monday and it was the one in Avalon I found the school on a Monday I registered on Tuesday and I started Wednesday that was August 2008 I got my license in January 2009. Um, That summer, I took my resume to like our industry trade show, which is Premier Orlando. It's huge. There's like millions of people, thousands of people there Um, in the beauty world, right? But you have like all the big companies. You have like Revlon, L'Oreal, Orly, Cody, like everything, like skin, Mm -hmm. their hair, everything. And I knew there was a company I wanted to work with and I'm bold, (laughs) Mm. No, oh, no, you're fresca like to me. Yeah, you're fresca. <laughs> you're fresh. <laughs> Whoa, I love it. <laughs> so I, I, I remember I took my, and the reason why I knew of this specific company is called CND Creative Nail Design, was because for like ten years before that, my manicurist who did my nails, I love the way she did my nails, mm-hmm. and she used this oil, and I'm like, wow, if I ever want to do nails, I want to. I want to be like you and I want to work for the company that you're mm-hmm. with or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so let's fast forward like 12 years. I go to Premier and I go with my resume and I go to their booth. So you guys are familiar with trade shows. Like yeah. every company has a booth, right? So I go to this booth and I hand my resume to Roxanne Valenati, who's kind of like the big shop there. And I said, hi, my name is Naomi Gonzalez. I was a Gonzalez. That's it. But I got funny. And I said, um, here's my resume. I want to work here. And she said, do you have any experience? I said, no. <laughs> she said, how long have you? <laughs> she said, how long have you been doing nails? I said, five. I said, four months, right? Four months. <laughs> and she said, <laughs> and I took all these classes with them. It was great. And then that September, 2009, I went to Spain for something. I think I was trying to get over a breakup. I went to Spain. <laughs> it was a breakup with my now husband. But anyway. So I, went, I, went, I went to Spain to get to try to get over him. I don't think it worked. But one day, <laughs> with a lease in my hand to open up the first vegan nail salon in Stanford, wow. Florida, downtown Stanford. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I swear, I didn't know. But I knew that, you know, that thing, like, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had that attitude. And I'm like, I know for a fact that my worst work is someone's best work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just opened up this nail salon in 2009. <laughs> the first vegan organic nail salon. I didn't use any kind of pedicure chairs. Every product that I had was professional, like, pro products, CND pro products. Mm-hmm. Meaning you couldn't go to Walmart or CVS and right. targeting and pick up polishes or right. it was extremely exclusive in terms of products and extremely niche in terms of services. And that was mm-hmm. really important. Mm-hmm. So that was in 2009, 2010. I started getting a little like, hey, 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 this is great. Then two years later, 2011, I remember, I think it was March, 2011. I get a phone call. Do you know who it was? Roxanne Valinati from CND, who I gave my resume to, and she said, I've been holding on to your resume for two years. We would like to invite you to California to do boot camp, which is their way of saying, hey, are you, like, good enough to be part of our educational team? Wow. Wow. And I'm like, oh, my <laughs> God, this is major. And I went, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I couldn't do acrylic nails, and I couldn't do, I like, I was a hot mess. Right. But everyone else is a hot mess because what they do is like they break you down to build you up. Right. Mm-hmm. So 
I got recruited for I, I packed it and I started there. That's that was my start in two thousand wow. with C and D based in California and because I could speak Spanish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They sent me to Mexico. Nice. To a place of um Querétaro and that's where one of their um labs, their manufacturing was for the Latin America distribution. So I went there to talk about shellac, which is what you guys call gel manicures now, you know, when you mm-hmm. yeah. like uh-huh. that, that they were the ones who innovated that technology. And wow. it's interesting because that was like kind of like a little oopsie how that shellac gel polishes came. They were mm-hmm. looking for a nice hybrid of things that could cure better with light and a ligamer is a monomer. I can go to chemistry, but yeah. we can talk about chemistry and women in research and development in another mm-hmm. but anyway so, <laughs> so I went to Mexico and then that just opened up other opportunities like it was just one thing that just led to another way then and then you saw the manufacturing aspect and all of okay. that too mm-hmm. so then it's like uh, you were yeah. exposed to this whole other layer yeah, then I got, right yeah right and then in terms of R, we call that R&D in, in our industry in terms of research and development I started doing testing in which I would be sent products for me to test on clients mm-hmm. because at this point I had a salon so I, I had mm-hmm. the availability the accessibility to get fresh hands mm-hmm. and because clients usually come like every two weeks three and a half weeks four weeks or so we can see what a true test. We can see mm-hmm. how the product is on the nail, how it lasts, how it functions, um, the longevity. That's a really big thing. Mm-hmm. The structurability of stuff. Again, mm-hmm. all these other. Um, yeah. And client satisfaction yeah. and the feedback from mm-hmm. the clients too, right? Yeah. And that's like the most crucial thing because you can have a great product, but if the client doesn't like it, we're not going to develop it. Mm-hmm. And I bring that philosophy into like my company now. Um, so yeah, I started doing that. And then 2000, then to, I was like, I think I need something else because I'm getting a little bored mm-hmm. and all this time I'm a single mom too. I'm not like, I, I'm not Boku money here. I'm not like Rolexing my, no, none of that. I'm a single mom with a nail salon. And in the middle of the camera. depression, too, mm-hmm. a recession, because you launched oh it in my. the middle of a recession too. A hundred percent. That's a great point and then I was in downtown Sanford and if you come to downtown Sanford now it's it's amazing but uh, 2009 like maybe 10 years ago it wasn't this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know I was like it Mm -hmm. I was very different than the norm that was there and I had really good support from the from the people there so you know obviously there was something good right there was something Mm -hmm. right I was Mm -hmm. able to really cater to a niche and I think that's what I was able to really encounter, but then I started getting busy with C and D and traveling and doing all these education trainings. And there was a friend of mine who was like, "I'm going to do some nails for this magazine." I'm like, "How did you do that?" <laughs> She's like, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I have an age, and I'm like, "Who is it?" <laughs> She gave me the name and I emailed that agent and they started giving me gigs. They didn't sign me. Hmm. They just started giving me gigs because I'm in Florida. So if there's no one else, I need someone, they would call me. And I started working with them. And my first campaign, believe it or not, was the body issue hmm. for ESPN body issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did Carlos Bocanegra's Petty and Manny. And it was in Claremont, and I was in love, but he was married. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, like, my first time experiencing, like, wait, this this is work? People, like, you're paying me to do this in a trailer mm-hmm. on set for, a, like, a mess. Wait, yeah. this isn't yeah. real. Yeah. And we're going back. 2012 that's eight years ago yeah what it is now right yeah and then I started I started doing more work with them I did that campaign I did two of them I did um Lane Bryant I started doing Tory Br- like started doing they would call me right mm-hmm. and then I remember in 2017 I contacted this agent same thing <laughs> and I was like hey if you need me I'm in New York I, oh yeah and then I started okay that's editorial then I started working as an assistant for a company called Zoya, um, mm-hmm. Art of Beauty. And I was just an assistant and I was working for another lead. Again, an assistant. 
Mm-hmm. So I think I was busy in 2012. <laughs> and <laughs> she was gifted the shellac manicure set by CMD. And she said, hey, Naomi, can you help me with this since you work? I'm like, yeah, I can help you. I can help you with, with, with shellac. That opportunity lands for me to not just a sister, but give me opportunities to be a lead at Fashion Week with the same company. Mm. Just because I knew product the product, yeah, mm-hmm. of this mm-hmm. other thing. And, you know, I'm not going to step on no one's toes. I'm not there like, be like, hey, it, it, it's something that symbiotically, is that a word, right? Symbiotically kind of just yeah. like occurred. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then um, I started being a lead for fashion, which opened up a whole other world of, of experiences and opportunities because now I'm working with designers. Now I'm working with like, <laughs> like you know, now I'm working with like um, makeup artists like Bobby Brown. I work with Bobby Brown. That's wow. <laughs> yes. yes. Huge. Guys, I did a show for Carolina Herrera. The design V, like a V, V. So mm-hmm. I was lead. So in their programs, where they're saying nails, you know, whatever, I'm there. So I got the, so I'm getting Fashion Week experience and I'm getting the editorial experience. I'm still not signed. And then in 2015, there was a little shift in uh, 2013, there was a little shift in terms of uh, personal, and I was able to be recruited by Essie. Everyone mm-hmm. knows Essie, right? right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So to be one of their platform artists. And at this point, I was kind of like relocating overseas to England. And I said, this is a, a, a more global company. It's a bit more established because it's L'Oreal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I became one of their platform artists. And then in 2015, I moved to New York, where in New York City, um, Essie opened up this partnership with a renowned um Salon called Serge Normand John Freda. You know John Freda? Yeah. The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The hair mm-hmm, hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's real, by the way. He's, he's British. <laughs> <laughs> like a real person. <laughs> he is. I've met him. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I worked at Serge's, he's a French dude, um, as his salon, as their house for their resident manicures with Essie. Wow, nice. And that's where I really started to get celebrity clientele. Yeah. Uma Thurman, Anna Shikatora, um, Sarah Jessica Park. Like, I started to get people because mm-hmm. they would come in, get their hair done, and while they're mm-hmm. processing color, I would do their nails. Mm-hmm. In the interim, I'm still doing Fashion Week, and I'm still working with Essie, and I'm still getting editorial calls. Even mm-hmm. assisting, I was still getting so... That's what really started. So here I am traveling, da, 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 doing all that. And um, then in 2014, I was, because I was already kind of like in England, I became the lead for New York, um, New York, London Fashion Week Fashion Scout. And those are 28 design shows. Mm-hmm. And my name was on all of them. And I was sponsored by the body shop. Nice. Mm-hmm. The first one ever. So. And it was because of, of a connector, of a connection. I, you know, it, it, all these was because of connecting. <laughs> well, and I want to interrupt you, though, because it also has to be with being courageous. Yes. And I just feel and bold and, bold and, and, not, saying, <laughs> and, freca, and not saying no. Yes. And not saying no, because sometimes I feel that we're our own, like we sabotage our own opportunities, mm-hmm. you know, because we're like, oh, I'm not ready for that. Or, oh, wow, I'm not, you know. Or I only have four months experience and I it, can't approach this big company. Yeah, exactly. So then, and, and so there's something to be said that, yes, absolutely, all of these things kind of connected, but it was because you didn't say no, because yes. you didn't shortchange yourself. You know, and you're like, ah, maybe I think I could do that. And you would just jump head first. Go for the ride. Yeah. You go, yeah. I'm you like, oh, the ride. I speak Spanish. You want me to go to Mexico? Yeah, I could do that, you know. And I'm sure <laughs> and I'm sure it was difficult, you know, being a mom and trying mm-hmm. to coordinate like the support system to make sure that, you know, everything was taken care of and that you were able to do these things right but also feel a sense mm-hmm. of okay I, and i'm taking care of everything like i'm you know it's so hard isn't it uh, i didn't have 
I didn't date anyone during that year because it's <laughs> that would be one more thing to worry about. <laughs> no, but definitely you're talking about multitasking in your uh -huh. life, right? And yeah. yeah. Thing to ensure that your children and your business and your business like yourself are oh, all yeah. kind of mm -hmm. taken care of. And I can tell you for a fact for for years I self care wasn't my priority because my priority was to get going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hust I, I don't like to say hustling because hustling kind of sounds like everything's like undercover. No, mm -hmm. I, I was a driver in the way. No, I was an architect of my life. I wanted to oh, build a life like that. Mm -hmm. that, that was very symbolic to what I felt was good. And it was hard. The hardest part wasn't doing the work to build it. The hardest part was navigating weak structure. So I'm going to put it like in a visual perspective. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when I see like weak structures, if you're cementing a block and that sub block of cement, the mixed ratio between that cement powder and water aren't correct, right. that, you know, that chemical reaction isn't going to work. And there's not going to be much stability there. Right. Yeah. So and for me, those instabilities were a lot of rejection because I got a lot of, it wasn't like here, open door, here, open door. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, it was a lot of no. Yeah. And, and and not just no like I like when I contacted Asian like hey I'm here in New York if you need me they were like don't ever call me again and I'm mm. like oh my god oh my god oh my god but guess what they call me within mm -hmm. a month and a half apologizing because they were just under stress a lot of things are going I could have taken that opportunity and be like no I'm not gonna I didn't. yeah I I forgave mm -hmm. I moved on. I became signed with them and I, mm -hmm. and they've been amazing with my career. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, you get a lot of no's, you mm -hmm. get a lot of no's, you get, I've gotten so many no's. I mean, crying, like, because we all, right, we're human. Yeah. yeah. But someone said it best and, and, and today I can understand it better. Like rejection is direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to, process yeah. when you're in the moment right yeah. mm -hmm. and when you are getting no's 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 constantly like I remember someone telling me that Naomi your look is unacceptable we're selling beauty here mm -hmm. oh wow mm -hmm. because they don't like curly hair girls mm -hmm. in an exclusive place where they cater to mm -hmm. the elite I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. being honest it's, yeah no totally yeah. mm-hmm or I didn't look again. I'm in a very interesting field. It's beauty, and although appearances is unfortunately <sighs> part of any industry, right? Uh, I, from every, I mean, everywhere, hard, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so hard, and I'm hoping change will occur. But I, I don't know. <laughs> but it was just something that was constant because if you guys get to know me, I'm five feet tall. I'm not a tall girl. Mm -hmm. I'm like this. I'm like, you know, I'm little. <laughs> I'm not a thin woman. So I don't fit that like influencer. Again, there wasn't no influencer then, but like that type that was supposed to be like where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Like I remember in London, someone told me, why are you here? You're not supposed to be here. I'm like, but why? Oh, you're not mm -hmm. British. Look at you. Like, again, Wow. Till now. Yeah. Till mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. To this day, I get stuck. It, so it's navigating that. I think mm. if you're able to navigate that, everything else is like butter. It's smooth. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think that um, your confidence and your, and I know that that's something that we all have had to work on, right? Is that, am I good enough? You know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, will they listen to me or is this the right time? Or maybe I should wait and all of this stuff. But um, I, yeah. I'm glad that you like that you brought that, you know, into the, into the conversation in the sense we're explaining that, of course you, it's been all of these years, but it wasn't always easy. I mean, there right. were all the, you know, there was resistance, mm -hmm. there were, you know, naysayers or, and all of that stuff, but, but here you are. And now you, 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 all of this knowledge and expertise that you have, you know, talk to me about when you decided, you know what, I'm going to launch my own, my own line, you know, what, what compelled you 
you know, to take that leap of faith and just say, this is the time I, I, I want to do it and I'm going to do it. And how did you go about getting it done? That's a, that's a <laughs> great question. Um, and just to piggyback what you were saying, to this day, I'm still getting naysayers and I'm still getting snubbed. Yeah. You remember that? It yeah. still happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. So I, I really began to look at this in 2009. We're going back 11 years. When I was looking at the place for my salon and I was, I was just my daughter. I have the little book. I don't have it with me. It's in England, but I'll send a picture of it. The little, I call it my idea book, right? The little book, it had, it's, it's black and it had white flowers and this little pink belt. It's like this big, like small. And I go, Jackie, write down the measurements of the door. So we look at And I go, you know, Jackie, what kind of nail polish things would you, we should put, we should come up with our own polish name. And Jackie's your daughter, right? right? And your Jackie's your yes. daughter. Uh-huh. Jackie's uh-huh. my daughter. Uh-huh. And she would write it down. And so from 2009, I had an idea that I had names. So obviously somewhere in the psyche, mm. that was going to be manifested somewhere. Yes. Uh-huh. So, um, I started looking into um, companies. I, I needed a, a lab. I needed a beauty lab specifically. And um, I started searching. Then I found a lab, I think, in 2013 or so um, in South Florida. And we started, you know, because again, um, I like how you say, say fresca. Um, <laughs> 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 And I was like, I'm going to just, I'm going to email them and see what room is there for me to either buy stuff, product, or buy, buy the lab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I, I contacted them and okay, the lab wasn't for sale, but other things were. And I'm like, I think there's something here. And that was really important because manufacturing is is this crucial. But if I didn't have that knowledge of how polishes work, if I didn't mm-hmm. have knowledge of how companies work, the operational part of it, what how do you analyze an MSDS sheet, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all these components and you're like, it's not just going to, you know, target and picking up a color. Right. Right. It's everything that goes into enticing you to pick up a color. That's that's what I knew. Yeah. And a lot of, and I would do consulting work with people and, and they kind of like wanted that knowledge. Mm-hmm. I gave it to some of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a cause. <laughs> if they put it to use, I don't know. If they didn't, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I have. So anyway, I knew this and, and I started really developing a great relationship with them. Um, and I, in 2018, I, I'm like, now nah, we're going to do this. And I, I produced my first batch of polishes and two years ago, but I was working still for Zoya. I was still mm-hmm. their lead. So I had to put that on hold because it was a yeah. uh, conflict of interest. Like, yeah. Conflict of interest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I had amazing support, even during the development of it, even coming up with like the content that you see on my Instagram or what you see in the on on my website it was a labor of love from a lot of people yeah who believed in me that wanted yeah. to support me and I think yeah. that's pretty awesome right yeah so um yeah so in 2018 I started my first batch and it sold out wow I didn't wow. post it I didn't do I didn't do any of that right it was it was literally I had to give samples away because you want you want to gift the press or yeah. influencers mm-hmm. and other manicurists. But it went from the hands of designers. So designers started using it and the editorial started using it. Mm-hmm. So like if I'm on set, so I did that year, I did the cover of InStyle magazine with Serena Williams. Nice. And we do stand in the for this. Yeah, yes. her. <laughs> Serena Williams. Uh, I'll tell you something about her that I I really. She is chilled. She is mm-hmm. just chill and fantastic. And she didn't have an entourage. You would think no. She had a makeup artist and a hair art like a, a hairstylist there. There were we were just chill. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and you know your place when you're doing, when you're on set with A-listers. Mm-hmm. You, you know your place, you know, you, there are some rules, some gentleman rules, but anyway, um, I did that and, and we use sand and skin. Um, that's one of my colors. Mm-hmm. It was selected to be used, but she already had her nails done. So I did some other stuff while you're on set as a manicure. You don't only do nails. You're do, you are licensed to do massages, as, you know, mm-hmm. as yeah. part of it. So she, her legs are being massaged, her arms, et cetera. Just, you know, part of the deal. You can pamper them in other ways, not just right. doing nail right. care, okay? Right. So anyway, so in the end, 2018, and then I got a call from Makeup uh, Makeup Forever. You guys familiar with Makeup Forever? Mm-hmm. It's a makeup mm-hmm. company. No. It's, based, mm-hmm. it's based out of Paris, but they have an academy. And they're like, Naomi, would you mind sponsoring or coming and launching your line? So I launched my line in New York in July of 2018 and then it just that's it blew up and then yeah yeah and and then I took a break for a year because I contractually legally had to yeah and then we relaunched now doing this crazy pandemic and people like why are you doing it now you're crazy people don't have money and I said no you're Mm -hmm. wrong why not during it now listen Mm -hmm. now we need it more than ever now we need it more than ever. Yeah. Yeah, not only that, I mean, th- I want you guys, I like business, but I, I never went to school for business. I don't have like a business. I just want everyone to know I don't have a business yeah. degree, but I have like this thing about it. I, does any, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. I like, like it. I enjoy it. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you have a business back in the day, and when I mean back in the day, like post, for all, uh, pre-COVID, right? Mm-hmm. You would have a storefront and a website. The website was in addition to your mm-hmm. storefront, right? Mm-hmm. Your brick and mortar. Now, it's reversed, mm-hmm. right? E-commerce is your storefront. And an actual brick and mortar store is going to be your addition. You don't need it mm-hmm. anymore, especially if it's mm-hmm. retail. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think experiences can be created just as fantastic via virtually as mm-hmm. in person i mm-hmm. see the touch that the, 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 the physical touch, touch, yeah mm-hmm. oh it's fantastic but when it comes to certain things you can also create that on a virtual yeah. level yes no mm-hmm. i love so that. that's what so i wanted a product that was going to be um environmentally friendly ecosystem you know eco sustainable green I think that's really important. I've always had green in my business model. Mm-hmm. That's why my salons were vegan and organic. We didn't have pedicure um, care. We, we don't need them, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's just a convenience. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are, they're free from everything, you know, mm-hmm. chibling, you know, no resin, no formaldehyde, et cetera. It's vegan friendly. That's important. Mm-hmm. But the niche to my line is, guys, that there was, a huge gap for people of color, of color. Mm-hmm. And, and when I mean color I'm talking about even if you're albina like like red hair pasty white skin yeah. to your beautiful Nigerian queens like mm-hmm. there was mm-hmm. a huge like gap in the need of what nail care right mm-hmm. so here I am behind stage like on set or like fashion week whatever it was you see me blending pigments so mm-hmm. color theory is another thing that I know mm-hmm. and that was because of my design experience mm-hmm. you know we're going back to that you know so yeah. it's all so coming anyway, together mm-hmm. it, yeah it always does you know it always does guys yeah. remember it always does yeah. nothing's ever wasted <laughs> <laughs> so I started to create pigment and, and combine and mix because the nude finding a good nude color was close to an impossible to call a skin tone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. and I said w- w- there, there has to be something better <laughs> Naomi nail lacquer <laughs> yes yeah. Naomi nail lacquer wow so that's that's 10 plus years in in of of developing something yeah. that needed to be developed because yeah Finding a nude is is a hard, hard color to to find. Yeah. People think it's easy. No, Mademoiselle will mm-hmm. look very different on Zalanda, me, and you. It, it's yeah. a mm-hmm. whole 
Yeah. So how do you, how do you fix that? Because there's a lot of people who really like nude polishes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I'm like, why are we doing this? So I guess I did it. Yes. And well, good for if, you. I, if I could jump in, coming from somebody from the age of 18 to whatever age I am now, I'm not going to put that out there. I've always gone to the nail salons. I've always had acrylic on my nails because my nails are very brittle. So I would put the acrylic so that they can be nice and long. And of course, COVID happens and the acrylic comes off. My nails are jacked up. And one Friday I'm telling Naomi, Naomi, I don't know what the hell to do with my nails because they look a hot mess. I'm afraid to show my hands. And mm-hmm. she's like, well, I have something for that. And I was like, really? So I put in my order and I got my Naomi nail lacquer. And I'm in bliss because I'm wearing bliss today. <laughs> and I'm modeling my stuff. And my nails look so much healthier. Even though they're shorter, I'm kind of liking it more than the acrylic nails. I don't know if I'm going to go back. So mm-hmm. I'm hooked, yeah. Naomi. I'm hooked, girl. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And for all those naysayers, <laughs> just so you know, right before so we you started know. recording this podcast, Naomi got an order that she was <laughs> printing. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah. That's all we want to say. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, I wanted to make, I, believe it or not, and, and Zolanda, thank you for that. I wanted to make nude sexy. I mm-hmm. wanted to make natural nails sexy. Yeah. I wanted to be able to get a color that is as natural as your skin tone. I wanted to make that and create that sexy, yeah. but also mm-hmm. part of it. Because I think that's... Yes. Yes, yeah. I love it. I love, I love it. This it. was so much fun. <laughs> I feel I feel that this was like a crash course, mm-hmm. right? On how to reinvent yourself, on how to pa- follow your passion, on how, you know, we're all so, especially in like on LinkedIn and like in the corporate sector, so hung up on titles and academia and masters and all of that, which is important. I'm not saying mm-hmm. it's not, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't, I, I'm not saying there's no value in it, but you know, you like completely, you know, took a chance on, on other forms of of education. I mean, mm-hmm. like the power of a vocational, you know, um, school, you know, mm-hmm. and how you completely grabbed the bull by the horns and transformed your life by, you know, taking chances. And the biggest chance you took was on yourself. And yeah. I think that's just wonderful. <laughs> I think that's just like freaking awesome. Can I be your friend too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's like we we all should have like a personal set, like board of directors, you know? Mm-hmm. And and yeah, and I feel like you're like the like the epitome of someone that's been there through all of those stages mm-hmm. and that could really and and uh, aside from that that you would lay it on thick. Like you're not going <laughs> to beat around the bush. And like tell you, you're not. I'm not gonna hear from you what I want to hear. Like you're gonna tell me straight <laughs> up. You know, you're like, fuck, you're wasting your time. You know, what are you doing? Or don't listen to them. You know, mm-hmm. and just uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people can handle that kind of feedback, and others yeah. can't, and that's fine. You know, it's funny you say this <laughs> because I I think we forgot to tell people that I also don't live in America full time. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I, I also live in England. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a whole other business there, and it's so related to this. <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about uh, when we first started, we were talking about how to get global. And, and, and I, this part, I think I got lucky because I was able to live in another country legally. I was able to get there and, and work right away. That's what I need. But um, it's, I believe anyone can do whatever they want to do if they want to do it. I think a lot of it has to do with the drivers within yourself and the mm-hmm. desires that you have. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and if you keep 
saying like, because we all have insecurities. I still have insecurities, especially after this quarantine, mm-hmm. the quarantine 15. <laughs> My, yeah, my we all we all got them. Best friends. I'm, yeah. yeah, I mean, right? We all have insecurities, and sometimes when I'm with people who are, and, oh, Zalanda and I, we talked about this in the book club, in our book and the book that we were reading, um, the introvert. It's like there's always someone that's gonna make me feel or or not like get that intimidating, like that you want to feel mm-hmm. small, you want to feel yeah, small yeah. factor. You kind of get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, how do you get yourself out of there? Well, you got to talk to yourself. But like, okay, feel it and move on from it. And I think mm-hmm. that move on from it, that like going through it, like it's okay yeah. that you have all these insecurities. It's okay that you you don't feel too confident at the moment. All those feelings are normal and all those feelings are natural. And it's, it's so okay. It's so okay. But it's how you navigate that. That's going to be mm-hmm. your key to success at the end of the day. When mm-hmm. people ask, so how come I've been doing it for all these years? And then I'm like, okay, let's talk about it. And then they start sharing their story. And I see them like, oh, baby, I wish I can just hug you. But you got to hug yourself through those moments of difficulties. And I think yeah. that right there, what, that is navigating that. Navigating that is the key to anyone's mastery. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally, Absolutely. totally. This was so much fun, Naomi. I feel like, yes. I could talk, like we could talk to you for days. You know, we have to have <laughs> you have you back um, with us to share, you know, um, future successes, which are right around the corner. And so you mm-hmm. can tell us the outcome of this, you know, pandemic launch, you know, <laughs> that you <laughs> that you've done. And and I I mean, yeah, it's just a joy to talk to you. And I'm so excited to have finally met Thank to have you. heard so, so many great things about you um, from Shalanda. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was it was fun. I don't get to do these often, especially with other, you know, sisters. Yeah. Another mister. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's kind of, it's definitely refreshing. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Anytime. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Awesome. This concludes this episode of I Have Something to Say. We want to thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. We're on Spotify and iTunes as well. There's more to come next week. And remember, if you have something to say, it's time to speak up.